Okay, finally, we have completed the scan after a long wait. Actually, this scan took several hours. Uh, at a point, I was beginning to wonder why is it taking this much time, uh, more than three hours, uh, how to wait. Uh, so finally, I had to go make some changes on my OpenVAS configuration on the VM. Uh, so I want to show you what I quickly changed to ensure that this scan finally completed. So on my virtual box manager here, uh, you could see what we did was try to scan this web server, which is a WASP broken web application. And we are scanning for vulnerability on that server from our open VAS from Greenbone network. And so before now, um, if you go to my Greenbone enterprise, you see that uh, on the settings, um, I've increased the memory to 4096, which is um, 4 gig of RAM. And then I increase the processor from one to two. Uh, normally my memory was two gig, which is 2048. And it was like the, the, the scan queued for, for like two hours and nothing is happening. Uh, so I had to come and increase it here. So this laptop I'm using currently is eight gig of RAM, right? And so what I've done is made sure that on my Windows 7 machine, I'm not assigning it to any memory, it's just 4MB. And my Kali is also 4MB. My Parrot is also 4MB. Okay, so I'm not making use of these three systems. And so I'm not allocating memory to them. And so out of the 8 gig I have on my laptop, my green bone is taking 4, and this old wasp is taking 1, making 5 gig in total. And so my system, my laptop still has 3 gig to play with. Okay. Uh, so those were the changes. So before now, if you went to settings on my green bone, which is open vast, the vulnerability scanner, um, I allocated a two gig and one processor, but that wasn't, um, was nothing to write home about because the scanning was just there looking at me. So I had to come to systems and increase that guy from two gig to four gig of RAM. And uh, yeah, I also went to processor and increase it from one CPU to two CPU. And after those changes, um, the scanning started. Okay, uh, so just take note of that. Um, just in case you waited for hours and your scanning is doing nothing, just sitting there. <laughs> All right, so let's look at scans and look at uh, the task that we created earlier on. Uh, and we're going to see that it's completed. So um, we now want to see the results of this scan, right? So I'm going to click on this uh, done. And in here, we are going to see the results. So uh, you see the results, 610 of 2,795. 2, we only scanned one host. And um, yeah, so uh, we're going to go through all of this in a moment. But uh, let me first of all download this report in a PDF format, right? So once again, once you go to scans and you select your task, so you know here is where you can actually create a new task if you want to conduct another scan. We just go to the scan itself down here. Either you click on under the status or you click on the scan name, whichever one you do, you click on it. And then you come to this icon here that says download filtered reports. And the report, I want to download it in a format of PDF. And I can actually store that PDF as a default uh, in case the next time that I'm scanning and i want to download the report of my scan it should always be in pdf format okay so i'm going to click on okay and wait for that guy to be downloaded into my pc and we can actually crack open that pdf and that will serve as a report of the pen um do i say pen test the reports of the vulnerability scan 
and this report could be shared with those that need to have access to it so they can have an idea of the security posture of uh, the organization's IT systems. Okay, so wait for this report to, um, I think it should be downloaded into my Kali by now, right? And um, Okay, so the report has now been downloaded. You remember that I connected to this OpenVAS, the Greenbone appliance, from my physical laptop. And so this report has now been downloaded. Um, if you go to the download directory of my laptop, you're going to see the report. In fact, if I come up here, you see that the report has now been downloaded just to meg in size. All right, so before I go open up that uh, downloaded report, we can actually have an overview of the results in here, right? So if we click on results, and it's going to display uh, a host of findings uh, that uh, the OpenVAS scanner was able to uh, detect. Okay, so you could see when we are creating the scan, uh, we configured what is called QOD, which is quality of detection. So you could see that most of the vulnerabilities here, uh, the quality of detection, QOD is 97%. So it simply means that the open valves is 97% sure that this vulnerability exists in those systems. So you could see the host that we scanned was 1916801152. And that is the OWASP broken web application. So, of course, OWASP broken web application is a vulnerable web server. And so you expect that we are going to have tons of vulnerabilities discovered in that application. But that gives you an idea of how we can conduct a vulnerability scan against the IT systems that you've got within your own environment. So take a look here. Apart from discovering the vulnerabilities, there are also severity attached to those vulnerabilities. So this is done using the CVSS, uh, which is Common Vulnerability Scoring System. It is used to rate the severity of the vulnerabilities. So you could see this is high, high, okay, so severity of 10. And there are some other vulnerabilities that are uh, medium or low, okay. So that severity tells us how um, we should how far we should quickly uh, try to fix those vulnerabilities so uh, we, we have quite a, a number of vulnerabilities here but i want to actually look out for one uh, one key thing here is that if you click on one of these vulnerabilities uh, it's going to ask you it's going to explain to you what was discovered and what you need to do to fix it okay so that is one good thing about this tool open vars okay so let me pick one of the vulnerabilities so i'm taking this vulnerability as an example so this particular OWASP broken web application is running uh, what operating system so let's take a look at operating system um, so is the detection here is that the operating system is end of life. So if something is end of life, uh, probably from end of life is where the vendor uh, announced that they are going to stop the sale of a particular product and uh, the vendor will still be able to support that product until the end of support date is reached. Okay, so once the end of support EOS date is reached, the vendor stops supporting such products which means that even releasing patches updates and all that will stop uh, from that vendor's perspective so let me give you an example of what we mean by end of life and end of support think of a windows operating system so in windows there are a couple of windows operating systems that have reached end of life and end of support like windows xp and windows 7 Okay, so these operating systems are end of life as well as end of support. Know that end of life is different from end of support. End of life is when the vendor make an announcement that in social date, they are going to stop selling the products. And 
Even though they have made an end of life announcement, they will still continue to support the product because they might still have some of their customers still using that same product. So they continue to make updates available for such products. But once end of support date is reached, then it means that they stop supporting the product and so you can no longer patch the product or perform updates, firmware updates, etc. Right? So here he detected that um, this particular operating system running on that web server is end of life, right? So let's click on it and take a look. And um, so I'm just going to click on this. So you look at the summary. Uh, it says the operating system on the remote host, the remote host is the host that we scan, which is 192.168.0.152, has reached the end of life and should not be used anymore. Uh, so it detected that is Ubuntu operating system that is running on the remote server. All right. Um, it also tells us the version of that operating system and how did it detect. So it checks if an EOL version of OS is present on the target host. Okay. And then what will be the impact of this vulnerability? So an EOL version of an OS is not receiving any security updates as I mentioned, and uh, from the particular vendor that owns our software. So unfixed security vulnerabilities might be leveraged by an attacker to compromise the security of this host, okay? Because this host is running um, an operating system that is no longer supported, and no updates of whatsoever is being released, uh, is going to help an attacker to compromise our system. So what is the solution? So this tool goes ahead to tell you what to do. So it says mitigation would be to upgrade the OS on the remote host to a version which is still supported by the vendor, right? And so if, for instance, you are using Windows 7, Windows XP, and to some extent Windows 8, you probably will have to make changes, um, perform OS upgrades in your network, and ensure that at least every system in your network is running Windows 10 or even Windows 11. Okay, so that will be a fix uh, so that those um, newer OS will still be uh, receiving security updates, patches from the vendors um, um, as that when due. So oh, that's actually what say, vulnerability scanning will uh, the insights that we are going to get from our IT resources when we perform vulnerability scan, all right? So that actually is the results of the scan. And uh, let's uh, actually open up the report. Uh, this report will now be shared with those that should have access to it, like the senior management. Okay, so the report, you see that I selected it to be in a PDF format, so that is easier for me to actually go through it. So this is the scan report for July 2024. So you see the summary and then you see the table of contents, right? Okay, so very nice um, crafted report. And then it's going to begin to mention each of the vulnerabilities, the severity of the vulnerabilities, then the impact, the quality of detection, and what you need to do, solution, okay? So this very one is uh, vulnerability in Oracle Java and is saying that the solution is vendor fix uh, which means that you need to get patches patches are made mostly like software updates from the particular vendor and then apply those updates in order to fix these vulnerabilities so uh, you get the idea so you can actually make this uh, bolder so that some of these things will be clearly visible uh, but that's actually the report of the vulnerability scan. So I hope you should be able to do this, you know, in cybersecurity, you actually need to showcase the employer what you'll be able to do, what projects you have done uh, before now. So in your CV, you should be able to put some of those tools that you've been able to use in your own home lab to just gain experience. So when it comes to vulnerability management or vulnerability scanning, all right, so I'm going to do another video on vulnerability scanning, but in this um, very video, we are going to be using another tool, okay? So you look at the whiteboard here, uh, when we cover the five major tools for vulnerability scanning, 
the number one on my list was Nezos, right? And so I'm going to make another video where I'll be showing you how you can quickly set up Nezos. Uh, I'll be setting it up in a Linux machine uh, to be precise, I'll be using Kali Linux, okay? So we'll see also how we can use Nezos from Tenable to perform a vulnerability scan. Thank you so very much. If you have found value from this video, kindly subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.